I got a phone call from my cousin. I guess this thing didn't even last a week under her ownership. The 645, uh, apparently all of the lights are on. So let's see what's up. They're all short. Oh boy. Yeah, service engine, low coolant, wonderful. Oh, they've got coolant. And oh, oh man, is that the water pump pulley? How is that still on there? Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And as you saw in the intro, the 2004 BMW 645 convertible that I gave to my wife's cousin didn't even last two weeks before it failed hilariously. The water pump has sort of blown up with the pulley just hanging on there and all of the coolant had leaked out among other things. So I had it towed to the car ninjas who we will visit today to see what happened. But today's video is going to be kind of weird. Really weird, as you saw in the intro. I am starting an OnlyFans account, but more on that in a little bit. We're also going to go to New York to Watkins Glen for the Gold Bowling NASCAR Cup race, where I am going to be the Grand Marshal, the guy that says drivers start your engines. I, I, I know, very, very strange, but there's a story to that. We're also going to visit the Car Wizard because he has started work on Apollo 911 apparently. But let's start with the title of today's video, why I'm starting an OnlyFans account, and that's because I really, really love this year of BMW. Yes, this is my 2001 BMW 740i Sport. It only has 80,000 miles on it, and I bought it a year ago. This is our one year anniversary for something like $7,000. Now, it needed a lot of work, but uh, normal BMW stuff like timing chain guides and some electrical issues is all sorted out fairly easily, and it has been a very solid citizen for me since. I really think this is the best year for BMWs. Doug DeMiro did a whole video on why the 2001 BMW model lineup is so good, and I feel like we had that conversation years ago, same with uh, uh, starting an auction site that would compete with Bring a Trailer. Uh, no rule she checks for those ideas, but anyway, it's fine. I really do feel like, though, the model lineup from 2001 from BMW is the best lineup model of cars of all time. The absolute best, the dream team, if you will, of cars. Starting with this is the flagship, the 7 Series, before they got overstyled with the bangle button all bloated and electronically complicated, which really just ruined it. It wasn't about the driving experience more, it was more about technology. All of the cars were driver's cars, and luxury in these cars meant how well they were put together, how they felt, not how much technology they had, and the whole lineup was just absolutely perfect. Starting with the bottom, you had the 3 Series, you had the E46 M3 with the S54 inline six cylinder engine. I know it had its defects with the rod bearings and the Vano system, but still a fantastic car. Same with the E39 M5, a fantastic, amazing driver's car with a big, almost 400 horsepower V8 manual transmission and similar looks to this. Fantastic car, valve guides just like this, only the engine has to come out and come all the way apart to fix and other issues, but still a great car. You have the X5, which just came out, and I think that's the weakest link of the bunch. Not the most reliable, but very good looking, and some desirable models like a manual transmission, three liter inline six X5, hard to find, and the four six IS, which is like the X5M today. And then you have the Z series, the Z3, which is a fun little Miata fighter sports car, a Miata in a tuxedo. And then you have the flagship, the Z8, which is an amazing car that got the V8 from the M5, a retro style from the BMW 507, a manual transmission, just an incredible, vehicle. And that's why I really think I need to assemble this dream team. As far as I can tell just from me googling around, BMW never took a picture of this iconic lineup in 2001. They were probably too busy getting up the, the bangle butts. So that's why having all six models all in silver all at once seems like well, the thing to do, and I've decided to make that possible by creating an OnlyFans. Now, I'm not gonna do anything inappropriate in there. It's actually a legitimate way to, to crowdfund and such, uh, but for only $12.69 a month, you'll be part of the team that helps assemble the dream team. You'll get exclusive access to the purchase process, early access to clips of videos and outtakes when possible, and other personal things that nobody else will see. Now, if you're weird but nice, I'll post a picture of my foot or 
something. But other than that, it's simply to assemble the Dream Team and the opportunity to have exclusive interaction and content with me. OnlyFans, and I promise this isn't a joke, this is real, makes this possible with their subscription service and ability to live stream. And I'm doing this on there rather than on YouTube's thing just to keep things separate. And the few lives that I've done on YouTube have just been too overwhelming with the comments that I really couldn't interact very well with anybody. So being a part of my OnlyFans, which is linked below, makes this dream, this dream team possible. So cancel one of your video streaming services you don't use or something and join for only $12.69 per month. And I look forward to chatting with you and building this incredible dream team on there. Yes, OnlyFans, Z8s are expensive, but let's get to the action of today's video. We're going to stop at Johnny's The Car Ninjas to see what has happened to the 645, if we're going to give it another chance or junk it, then check in with the Car Wizard on Apollo 911, which is beginning, and then fly to New York so I can be the Grand Marshal of a NASCAR race. And I'm sure they're thrilled to be in part of a video where I'm talking about doing an OnlyFans. Ninja! Hello! Um, came yeah. back. Came back too soon. <laughs> Very soon. It didn't even last two weeks. Uh, that's quite a explosion of a water pump there, huh? Yeah. What's going on? Well, I guess the bearing on the uh, shaft just went out, so it just decided to die. Exactly. And they managed to turn on the check engine light, and then there was a transmission failsafe for a little bit there that went yeah, away. Yeah, I scanned it, and nothing to worry about. It was just the communication between your crankshaft sensor and the transmission so i oh. cleared it never came back so okay uh if it comes back we'll just change the crankshaft sensor for you how much would that be i have to look it up i'm not sure it's cheap it's okay cheap. all right but this this is pretty involved here yeah uh it's not going to be as bad as uh the maroon m5 no <laughs> so but right. yeah this is kind of a pain to do but nothing we can handle so well i'll give it a few more chances. So I guess this is the second strike, and then the third strike, it's just going to go to Urination Bob's and get junked. But agreed. Holy agreed. moly! I'm going to head to the Wizards now. He's actually working on Apollo 911. The LS is out. Ooh. Yeah. Wizard. What's You're going on? Working on Apollo 911? Well, yeah. It's a miracle. You threatened to come down and help me get some work done on this thing. I think my new guy actually could fare a little better. <laughs> really? The new guy, Cameron, yes. who actually packed up his entire life into a BMW Z3. Uh, silver, right? Yes, sir. It is silver. It's part of the Dream Team and, and came to work for you. Long yeah. Beach to Newton, Kansas. So yes. what do you think of Newton life? It's fantastic. Where are you living nowadays? Hotel. In a hotel? Yes, sir. You can probably find like a mansion for the price of a little shack in Long Beach, right? Yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> That's yep. amazing. So this was the replacement engine that the previous owner that I sold to and then bought it back. He, he put it in, but just kind of slapped it in just to ship it here. But this is a, a replacement engine from the one that I blew up. It had no clutch in it, but it looks like... Yep. Did you put a clutch in? Yes, it has the clutch in it, back in it, back together. Really? can't really see it it's in back in this area yeah and what's cool about this is the LS fits in the back of the Porsche and it's actually pretty well balanced weight wise they're about the same because these are aluminum blocks but the center of gravity is higher because obviously it's not a flat six and it kind of hangs from its heads in a weird way in the engine that's kind of scary but it works it works well it blew up because I tracked it but we have a solution for that right yes I've got an oil can order that has baffles that's made just for that situation cool after it blew up, I kind of got sick of it, and at the time, I didn't have the money to fix it again. It seemed kind of pointless to do the build twice and spend that money, so I sold it off and always regretted it, this crazy, weird lobster interior, <laughs> the sports seats, and you've already done all the hard work, the wiring, the plumbing. Yeah, the hard part's over with. It's just putting it all back together and better. Build it better, right, That's Freddy? Right. Yeah. Okay, well, I have a really fun week coming up. I'm going to New York to Grand Marshal at a NASCAR race. That really? Yeah, driver start your engine, so I'll oh do that goodness. and come back, and I guess we'll see some progress, huh? Yeah, we'll probably have that back end and starting to go back together. The new guy. We need a name for the new guy. Yeah. Long Beach. So I've now arrived at Watkins Glen at the NASCAR Cup race, the Go Bowling at the Glen. It's a road course, left and right, and uh, got the VIP access because I am the Grand Marshal. I'm the guy that gets to say, gentlemen, or drivers, start your engines. And they're letting me out on the track in their car. The Go Bowling at the Glen has its own race car that is, well, 
a bowling pin shaped or shaped like something else. It has a Ford 302 in it, kind of like my uh, Mustang, the 66 Mustang, and a big blower on it. So I'm familiar with the motor, but uh, not with what's attached to it. Uh, and they're letting me go out for a couple of laps. We'll also visit their driver tour the pits and his race truck, or I guess the trailer that hauls their race car, along with some other cool behind the scenes footage. And then I get to well, call out driver start your engines. It's absolutely insane. driver wearing the shirt Eric Almarola and he has a YouTube channel as well Beyond the Tent. Well it's Eric Almarola YouTube channel but our docuseries is called Beyond the Tent. Cool. So uh, yeah it's pretty cool to give fans just a behind the scenes look at what goes on uh, you know that they don't get to see during the, the NASCAR race uh, broadcast. So. I am seeing a lot my whole life I just sat in the stands I've never been in all this so we're at the race hauler we're gonna go to the pits today and we're gonna see the go bowling car right we are you're gonna see it go through uh, technical inspection you'll see it on the racetrack and hopefully you'll see it running up front all right so what's going on in here I assume the cars go on top right this they is the do. ramp so yeah this is uh, this is a lift gate that the cars go up uh, we can fit two race cars up top and then this is the inside of our hauler here and we we keep everything on this hauler to completely rebuild the race car so we have front end suspension parts uh you know spindles rear end housings we have a spare engine on the hauler every single thing we need to rebuild the car plus all, all the drawers plus we have food and drinks oh yep there it is you don't sleep in here though these aren't little like japanese box hotel they're, that's right they're not uh, <laughs> but however the hauler driver up in uh, up in the front driving the truck he does have a, a bed in the back of the Cab. semis Let's continue the tour huh let's do it well, there it goes. Man, that rear quarter is a very tempting target with those pins on there. <laughs> yeah, so that is, uh, that's our race car. It's going through NASCAR technical inspection now. Okay. Uh, so it rolls up into this, uh, this scanning station. These curtains will go down. It makes a graph of the line and makes sure that the body of the race car is in compliance with uh, NASCAR technical inspection. And so, they need to be alone with it, I guess. Well, it has to be dark. It has oh, to be okay. dark for the laser. All right. For the laser so if I make a run for it, these guys will try and stop me. They would. That, 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 <laughs> yeah. so, and there's, there's my teammate's car. He's getting ready to go through next. So, nice. Yep, this is just the NASCAR technical inspection. Well, Eric and I have made our way over to the pit box. You just uh, pulled a turkey, yeah, right? I did. I just pulled a turkey here. We did a little pre-race uh, intro for Go Bowling, and uh, they gave me three attempts at bowling a strike, and I bowled strike at all three times. This is the pit box that the crew chief and the engineers sit on to make all the decisions about when to pit, when not to pit, should we take tires, should we take fuel only, right. um, all of those things. So I'll give you a quick tour of sure. our pit box. Sure. Tools. Hopefully you don't need this today, Hopefully right? Hopefully we don't need that. So that, that is to cut away crash damage. Yeah. Um, this is a, a bunch of tools and stuff to cut away crash damage or to repair crash damage. We got baseball bats in case you need those to <laughs> beat on some damage, but uh, hopefully that is not used. Hopefully we just need the jack uh, that's missing a handle currently. That'll be important. That, we need that later, yes. And, uh, and some pit guns that hook up to these air hoses here. So, well, that's a nice screensaver. Yeah. So it's not all set up yet. We're it's still early in the day. Yeah, uh, bash fishing seats. It looks but like. this is this is for <laughs> this is for kind of a gallery. Mm -hmm. um, we we invite sponsors and and uh, VIP guests and stuff to sit on the pit box and kind of see what's going on. This whole row down here is my crew chief sits here on the end, and right. then we have engineers sitting up here. 
and there's computers all set up and there's a, a bunch of, of, of data coming in at them uh, tire usage wear uh, fuel mileage all of those things plus the lap times of the race so there's a lot of different information that they're studying and looking at to make decisions on when to pit when not to pit so you like road courses it sounds like I do I enjoy it it's it's fun it's a very different form of racing than what I grew up doing I grew up all oval track mm -hmm. racing uh, so short track racing is is what is normal and, and most comfortable to me and road racing is something that is uh, out of my element a little bit but I've worked really hard at trying to uh, get better at it yeah well every time I do a road course I end up blowing something up but <laughs> hopefully you have better luck than me you're not doing it right <laughs> I know <laughs> well I broke the pin car but the good news is it didn't spew coolants all over the track and ruin the race so we're good there did overheat slightly though now I'm just waiting my turn here at the start finish line to call the race drivers start your engines because I haven't figured out how I'm gonna say it yet but I'm gonna say it and then I get to ride in the pace car uh, until the, the cars go off the track but just absolutely insane but now I need to get in the zone and and think of what I'm going to do to channel the drivers to start their engines <laughs> Well, it's the next day and I'm back at the wizard shop in Newton. I gave it my haul on that command to start the engines and uh, gave all of my heart, soul, voice, so I didn't have anything left in me to film yesterday. My voice is still a little hoarse, but now I'm back up here. Definitely thank you, Eric, for showing me all the cars and Go Bowling. Be sure to go bull to support Go Bowling, who let me go do this crazy experience. But now the uh, engines back in the 911, it, right? You're back. From your NASCAR expedition. I, I am. We are not worthy. <laughs> and speaking of drivers start your engines, this one's not too far away from starting itself. No way. We got most of the connectors hooked up. We need to run a few hoses and lines and we're waiting on the oil pan. I'd mm. say this week we very likely could be starting it. Wow. This thing hasn't moved under its own power in almost four years. Right, Apollo 911 will be resurrected a third time. Well, I'm not sure if it's three strikes you're out or if it's like a cat where it has nine lives. So, is it how much money I have left? Which, yeah, see if your bank account has nine <laughs> lives. I always seem to find more thanks to you all watching my videos, and then it all goes to this man here. So, so I can go yachting. Oh, yes, all right. Thank you for watching. I'm leaving for California next Countach rally, so oh be sure to not miss that. Yeah.